Hi, my name's Tim Davey and I work for the Leprosy Mission in Australia. I'm going to be travelling across the world on the journey of a lifetime, seeing the work of the Leprosy Mission through the lives of Leprosy Mission staffers and seeing firsthand the way in which the Leprosy Mission impacts the lives of people affected by leprosy. Will you join me? Timor-Leste is a young, independent nation that was part of Indonesia. It is located to the north of Australia, about an hour's flight from Darwin. Nearly half the population live below the poverty line, and many are in circumstances where leprosy can thrive. Although in Timor-Leste, leprosy has officially been eliminated as a public health problem, there are still pockets of the country in which the disease is endemic. We don't know exactly how many people are disabled by leprosy because of the stigma associated with the disease. Natalie Smith is from Melbourne and works with the Leprosy Mission in Timor-Leste. We just arrived at a place called Beheda, uh, which is part of Manatutu District. It's about an hour and a half from Dili. And we're going to see a community education session. Education is our prime weapon in battling the stigma of leprosy. At this session, people are being assured that the disease is a low risk and that it can be cured with little side effects if discovered soon enough. They are being encouraged to get themselves screened for early detection and for their own peace of mind. When we do leprosy screening, we're checking people's skin to see if there's any lighter coloured skin patches, which is the first sign of leprosy. Um, and for leprosy, those patches lose their sense of feeling. So we, we will touch the patches with cotton wool to see if the person can still feel on the patch. It's best to catch it early because if we can catch it as a skin patch before it starts affecting the nerves, then we prevent disability from coming. So disabilities only come when nerves have been affected that lead to loss of sensation in the hands and the feet. Villagers have come from far and wide to this event. Lecky Hunnett's leprosy has affected his feet. He and his family have walked in from over the mountain to participate and to receive attention. He gets shoes to protect his feet. Through leprosy, parts of his body lose sensitivity to heat, cold and pain and become vulnerable to infection and disease. So these practical gifts of love make life so much better and put a smile back onto his face. From Beheda, we travel to the north coast to Fatimita, a remote fishing village. Here, the Leprosy Mission has set up a self-help group. These groups enable members to work together so that they can survive and provide for their families. Behind me is the fishing enterprise of the Metanaro self-help group. Um, each day these, this group of people will go out for a couple of hours in the morning and collect about 20 fish and that's a, a business that helps support their community. It's a business that was funded by a loan, a small loan from the Leprosy Mission. And this is a way that Leprosy Mission is helping to empower these communities to um, have a better life and to help bring them out of poverty. Jeff Reno is a member of this group. He used to be a farmer who, due to the damage leprosy caused to his foot, was no longer able to provide for his family. Through the support of the group and the leprosy mission, he has been able to learn to fish and can care for his family. When there is an urgent need and you want to give a life-changing gift, You'll make a big difference through your gift of love, delivered with TLC by the Leprosy Mission. Shoes can protect leprosy affected feet from infection and disease and give confidence and mobility. A pair of shoes is just one of the many items you can choose from our Gifts of Love catalogue. Visit leprosymission.org.au and choose a gift that will put a smile on their face. So leprosy is a disease that's largely been forgotten in a country like Australia. That's because the prevalence of it is, is almost non-existent. But 
part of the work of the leprosy mission here in Timor-Leste is to ensure that it doesn't get forgotten here in a country where it's still prevalent. Leprosy is caused by a bacteria. It's a disease that is mildly contagious, uh, but it's a disease with a great stigma that's associated with it. A person like me is incredibly unlikely to contract leprosy. I eat well, I live in a, I live in a, a wealthy country, I have a good diet, but for a people here who may live in poverty uh, with poor nutrition, uh, leprosy is still a very real part of their life. And the challenge with leprosy is, is not so much uh, the disease itself or even the, the, the medical implications of it, but the social stigma that's associated with people who have the disease. So a large part of our work here is about training people at, at all levels to understand uh, the truth about the disease, to help them integrate into their society, to provide mechanisms by which they can earn a living and be a part of their community. We're now about to board a ferry to Atarauro Island uh, to visit a school which has been uh, modified for disability access for a number of children who attend with a disability. And what better way to get the point across than have one of our amazing staff members, who himself has a disability, lead the way. Freddie works with the Leprosy Mission. He is a teacher, an athlete, he is a father, and rides a motorcycle. With the right support, Freddie can do almost anything. And on our trip to Ata'auru Island, I felt proud to be a part of his team. He is a living example of a person living a full life and an inspiration to all he meets. And this is a primary school that um, the Disabled People's Organisation has supported for renovations for disability access. Freddie, our colleague, is here. He's going to give a disability education session to the kids here. Um, to help raise awareness about disability. Freddie gives examples of how people living with disability can live a full and active life. Yet without the right support, this won't happen. For example, if you can't get into a normal toilet, you're unlikely to go out at all. So the leprosy mission has modified the school toilet here to give access to all the kids. The toilet may seem like a funny thing to worry about, but when you read this statement, you will realise just how important it is. When there is an urgent need and you want to give a life-changing gift, you'll make a big difference through your gift of love, delivered with TLC by the Leprosy Mission. A toilet helps maintain a pollution-free environment, protecting the community from infection and disease. A toilet is just one of the many items you can choose from our Gifts of Love catalogue. Visit leprosymission.org.au and choose a gift that will put a smile on their face. Nepal is a beautiful yet poor country, landlocked between India and China, where around half the population live on less than a dollar a day. More than 150,000 people in Nepal are disfigured through leprosy. We're here in Nepal where the leprosy mission is very active because the needs are so great. We're on our way to the Anandaban Leprosy Mission Hospital. During our visit here, we will see the extent of the work that is needed to give total leprosy care. Leprosy isn't directly caused by poverty. However, there is a cycle of poverty that is associated with leprosy. People with leprosy invariably live in poverty, but leprosy also spreads in conditions of poverty. As we walk around, we'll, we'll see sanitary conditions um, and, and hygiene conditions that lend themselves to an environment in which leprosy is going to be found. How do we meet this challenge? 
Here at Anandaban Leprosy Hospital, about an hour's drive from Kathmandu, we meet Dr. Diana Hay, who is a world specialist in leprosy research. A patient who has come after seeing the doctor, they are sent down to the laboratory to see if there's any evidence of the bacteria that we can detect in their skin. To do this, we're going to look just under the surface of the skin by doing a minor cut, like a paper cut, to collect fluid and see if the bacteria is in the fluid. Now, leprosy bacteria is a cool temperature bacteria, so it only will grow in the skin or nerves that run close to the surface of the skin. So we are going to look underneath the earlobe skin. We will look at the elbow and the knee. These are also um, close to areas where there are nerves that run close to the surface of the skin. These are nerves that can result in disability if they are damaged. So there's nerves that run around the eye that can affect the patient's ability to blink. The nerve behind the elbow affects the patient's feeling and movement in the hand. And the uh, nerves at the knee and the ankle will uh, manage communication between the brain and the foot for walking. Let me introduce you to Sher Bahadir. He's here at Anandaban to receive surgery on his hand. He's been living with a clawed hand for too long. He's about to go into surgery, from which he'll emerge with his hand in a cast. After that, he'll face approximately two months of rehabilitation here at Anandaban, including physiotherapy sessions, after which to return to his family to resume a more normal life. So this is a typical claw hand uh, we see in leprosy. It's because of the nerve uh, paralysis. Uh, so people have claw hand, like deformed hand. And because of that, so they cannot have uh, good grabs. Uh, so they cannot do normal, usual work. They should do at home or at work also. So we operate on this one. So just like this one, this hand was like that before and operated last year. So no. that's the difference you can see. No. Straight fingers, good power. Uh, the another one to be operated, still different. Salon then? It's salon. As Sher Bahadur is prepared and operated on, I can't help but think about the difficulties that are faced in this country by people like him. People who suffer from the effects and stigma linked to the disease. The leprosy mission affirms the right of people affected by leprosy to receive treatment at any hospital. We work to end discrimination through the support we give and through the educational, awareness and advocacy programs we run. The Leprosy Mission supports their God-given right to live in dignity as full and productive members of the community. We leave Sher Bahadur to recuperate and move on to visit our work in a remote village in the district of Ramachup. Here with views of the Himalayan mountains, is a reminder that this is God's world. He made it, and he continues to sustain it. But to look closer is to see that this world is full of brokenness. In Nepal, we see the contrast between the majesty of God's creation and the brokenness of humanity. We live in the hope of the day when Jesus will return and complete his work of restoration. A day when he will banish evil suffering and sickness forever. At the Leprosy Mission, our ministry is among the poorest of the poor. To see the good news of the Kingdom of God come to the lives of the most broken. To see the world as God made it to be. I am with James Montgomery, our International Program Officer. James works with and supports our local staff as they seek to serve people affected by leprosy in remote areas. We've just arrived in the village of Tilpong in the Ramachup district in Nepal. We're about to visit a self-help group supported by our CEDA project, which is funded by supporters from Australia. CEDA stands for Community Empowerment, Development, Disability and Rehabilitation. 
The goal is to empower and improve the quality of life of people affected by leprosy and disability. So we're now participating in the meeting of a self-help group. Self-help groups are the way that we reach people in remote communities in Nepal. It's basically comprised of people affected by leprosy as well as with other disabilities. Through this group we provide literacy training, uh, vocational training, leadership skills, as well as small loans to beneficiaries. Bigu is 23 years old and she's had a severe disability since the age of nine months. Her mother has also lived with a severe disability for the last 25 years. Where we are now is four hours from their home where they've had a very hard trek over quite mountainous terrain just to get here and meet with us today. Unfortunately, because of the hard trek that they have to make to get here, it's just not practical for them to attend. Um, because of this, they're unable to receive help from the leprosy mission because we don't really have the, the staff or the resources to reach out to them four hours from here. Basic medical treatment um, is something that they've just been unable, unable to receive. They don't actually know the cause of their disabilities because they've never actually seen a doctor for them. Um, in addition to this, they could benefit from microfinance projects to help uh, support them in their day-to-day -day needs. Bigu in particular would, uh, would be helped a great deal by just having a, a basic walking frame. Um, instead, she has a, a lot of trouble. There are many other hidden people like this in Nepal, people that we are just unable to reach because we don't have the resources or the staff. There are many people like her who live in very remote areas and find it very difficult to, to reach medical treatment or financial support when they struggle in severe poverty. In contrast to Bigger Mayer's sad situation, let us show you what can be achieved through self-help assistance. We're walking now to the Batali village in the district of Ramachap in Nepal. It's about a two hour walk from the nearest road. When we get there, we'll be visiting a self-help group as well as some successful recipients of microfinance loans. Laxmi developed leprosy symptoms six years ago, but through early detection and the right treatment, she has recovered and through a small leprosy mission loan, is able to run her shop and care for her family. When there is an urgent need and you want to give a life-changing gift, You'll make a big difference through your gift of love, delivered with TLC by The Leprosy Mission. A chicken can provide nutritious eggs and an opportunity to breed chicks and poultry for a better life. A chicken is just one of the many items you can choose from our Gifts of Love catalogue. Visit leprosymission.org.au and choose a gift that will put a smile on their face. Wellesley Bailey was an adventurer. He was also the founder of the International Leprosy Mission. It was in the 1860s that he witnessed the terrible consequences of leprosy and vowed to make it his life's work to care for those with leprosy. Wellesley was an Irishman who dreamed of finding a more promising life in distant lands. He was a brave man and he first set off to find his fortune somewhat unsuccessfully on the Australian goldfields. It was on this journey that he became a Christian and later ended up as a missionary in India. There he met people with leprosy and was shocked by what he saw. If ever there was a Christ-like work in the world, he said, it is to go to these poor sufferers and bring them the consolation of the gospel. For family reasons, Wellesley returned home where he was able to tell people about the plight of people with leprosy in India. Out of this, the International Leprosy Mission was born, and as income was raised, the work expanded. The Leprosy Mission now has support offices around the world, which fund the work in places where leprosy is still prevalent. 2013 marks the centenary of the Leprosy Mission in Australia, which continues to reflect the heart and character of its founder. In the words of Wellesley Bailey, the Leprosy Mission was born and cradled in prayer. It has been brought up in prayer, it has been nourished in prayer, and prayer has been at the bottom of its success since the first moments of its life.
In these remote villages, the Leprosy Mission works with the community leaders in a cooperative effort to include and care for people who are living on the brink. Out here, education is the key to breaking the cycle of poverty. And yet the children are needed to help their families with the harsh farming work for them simply to survive. Through the village cooperative, educational needs of the children, as well as the needs of the sick and disabled are being addressed. And these have become a welcomed priority. Interestingly, curing someone from the leprosy disease is relatively easy. This is a course of antibiotics we call multi-drug therapy, or MDTs for short. Um, one of our field workers from the CEDAR project is now delivering to the, them to a patient in the field. This lady has been diagnosed with leprosy, and as she takes these drugs, within 24 hours, she's no longer infectious, so she can no longer pass on the disease to anyone else. Depending on the severity of her disease, she'll need to take these drugs every day for six months or 12 months, after which she should be, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that she'll be cured of leprosy. On our way back home, we stop off for some light entertainment. We're in Kathmandu now, in Ratna Park. This is a, a popular area, it's on a Saturday afternoon, the day off for many Nepali people. So it's a great opportunity to educate the community on, on about leprosy. <laughs> so aside from the physical impairments, people can also suffer stigma in their own communities. As a way to combat this, the Leprosy Mission supports street performances. What this um, involves is a, a group of actors going into a community and putting on a show. This is told simply and uh, in a humorous way so that the local people understand that there is a cure for leprosy, that people who have leprosy aren't cursed and shouldn't be exiled from their own communities. Um, they, they explain that people affected by leprosy have rights and should be treated as any other person in their own community. On arriving back at the hospital, I'm keen to see how my friend Shia Bahadur is recovering. He's up and about and ready for a physiotherapy session down in the rehabilitation ward. Shia Bahadur is in good spirits and is more hopeful about his future as he can see the improvement in his hand and knows the difference that will make. So this whole process, uh, surgery, rehabilitation, two months stay in the hospital, only costs about 400 Australian dollars, which just goes to show how a little bit of money can go such a long way in a country like Nepal. If you can help in any way, regardless of how small your contribution, recognise that it can make such a difference in the lives of people like Shia Bahashadir and others here with disabilities through leprosy in Nepal. One of the most devastating effects of leprosy is loss of sensation. The self-care unit is all about teaching people to live with this loss of sensation. People can develop ulcers in their hands or feet. They can lose their eyesight basically from losing the ability to blink. So the self-care unit basically teaches people, once they've been discharged from the hospital, to care for themselves at home so that they don't require further medical treatment. The Leprosy Mission Rehabilitation process is getting people back to work through skills training that teaches them to deal with their impairments, avoid injury, and work to the best of their ability. It would teach people how to get back to work. Mm -hmm. So if they're working on a farm at home, mm -hmm. they'll teach them how to use um, cooking utensils, how to mm -hmm. use farming equipment, mm -hmm. um, you in, in, a, in such a way that it won't result in further disability. We do this because when people don't have any sensation in their feet, it's quite easy for them to develop mm -hmm. ulcers as a result of their feet drying out and cracking. Mm -hmm. So they soak their feet and then and clear off any dead skin with mm -hmm. a, a rock mm -hmm. and then basically uh, rub their feet with Vaseline or mm -hmm. oil mm -hmm. to prevent them from drying out. Mm -hmm. When people who are used to being rejected are cared for and treated with dignity, the response is heartwarming. It is like they are being released from the burden of leprosy, and that gives cause for celebration. Through our Total Leprosy Care program, we see how a little TLC makes a world of difference.
Nigeria is in West Africa, on the Atlantic coast. It is about the size of New South Wales and is named after the Niger River, which runs through the country. Nigeria is home to more than 150 million people, of which two thirds live below the poverty line. Many communities are affected by leprosy and there is still discrimination and a lack of awareness about the disease. Ongoing security issues within Nigeria impact the lives of all Nigerians, but especially the poorest of the poor. In Nigeria, I will be taking you to some of the projects that the Leprosy Mission Australia is involved with and introducing you to some great people who both have had leprosy and work with those who have been affected. I'll also be meeting up with Helen Nixon from TLM Australia, who is in Nigeria to co-lead the Country Learning Workshop. Helen will join me as I visit some of the projects here. We listen to the challenges they face. The big issue is how to stop the stigma of leprosy. Most of the time, as a child, I'll face a lot of challenges, of discrimination. Though I didn't suffer from leprosy, but I suffered a stigma because my parents had leprosy. Some people, when they see their parents with leprosy, they will abandon them and run away. Ah, I said, no, I love my dad, I can't leave him. So I followed my dad to help away. And within the community, most of the community, they, you know, because of this, there are misconceptions about the disease that if, if they associate with them, they can also get leprosy. So they suffer a lot of stigma. TLM is working toward it to eradicate, don't let me say reduce, to eradicate the stigma. So they will be able to restore their dignity, they will be fully back to the community, and most of them they didn't, didn't know their rights. The workshop reinforced that to stop the stigma, we have to help people with leprosy to thrive. We need to improve their conditions and make their community a better place to live. Helen and I are at the village of Kabawa, where this is being put into practice. TLM have been working in this village for a while, and um, it's one of the, the places that TLM has really invested a lot working in the community. The Leprosy Mission has assisted the community of Kabawa through the introduction of clean water and building school classrooms. These facilities have enabled children affected by leprosy to integrate back into the community. Our staff worker, Mrs. Fashioner, explains. Before they have to struggle with accommodation, you'll find that in a class you have more than 100 children. But now, with the classrooms, it has reduced the population in each class, which has made the learning conducive for the children. It has brought dignity to the village and also to persons affected by leprosy because this building came as a result of their own request. And now it has boosted integration among persons affected by leprosy and non-leprosy people, both at the family level, at the community level, at the school level. I think this is great because the community has become self-sustaining in a way and although they still ask for TLM's help with different activities, in a way that it's more sustainable. Chief Gibran has been affected by leprosy, yet he runs a thriving palm oil business that was started with leprosy mission assistance. He buys the oil in bulk, repackages it and on sells it. You too can give practical help through a gift of love that can restore self-esteem and remove the stigma from someone in urgent need. When there is an urgent need and you want to give a life-changing gift, you'll make a big difference through your gift of love, delivered with TLC by The Leprosy Mission. A goat can provide a family with milk and cheese and the opportunity to breed more for a better life. A goat is just one of the many items you can choose from our Gifts of Love catalogue. Visit leprosymission.org.au and choose a gift that will put a smile on their face. Helen and I visit the village of Oi, a place that can be described as a beacon of light. We are warmly greeted by the chief. Welcome, Oibo. Welcome. Oibo. Welcome. Welcome. 
In the old days, and still in some places today, people with leprosy are isolated and herded into colonies where they'll be avoided and left to fend for themselves. But here in Oi, this is turned on its head. Through the assistance of the Leprosy Mission in developing their facilities to a high standard, this community has attracted others and the stigma has gone away. Such things as clean water, toilets, medical facilities and schools all add to appeal of a community where people with leprosy live. The Christian motivation to care for one another, combined with good facilities, make Oi a more desirable place to live. Oyi is a village that was started by people affected by leprosy and it's great because a lot of people have moved here because of the good things that have happened in the village. So I think it's a really good um, example of integration. I think that the village is really happy for, of what TLM has done for them. The leprosy affected people shared what they had in a startling example of God's ways at work. People who were once feared and rejected have become a light to those around them a people who are blessed by the generosity of others far away have themselves become a blessing. This is a people who identify themselves as God's children and live the values of his kingdom. At TLM, we understand our ministry to be the living, the values of God's kingdom. That we are God's people called to make known and live according to his ways. That we have been blessed to be a blessing, just like the people here. Nothing summarises the work of the Leprosy Mission better than the letters TLC. In one sense, they stand for tender loving care, which is the attitude that Jesus demonstrated to people with leprosy, an attitude that undergirds our ministry. TLC also stands for total leprosy care, the necessary ongoing process from diagnosis to cure and ongoing care given to people affected by leprosy. To give this TLC, we need the support of committed donors. People like you who are prepared to make an ongoing financial commitment by becoming TLC givers. Will you join us? On our travels here, we've seen joy and happiness. Children having fun and families interacting, lots of things that many of us may envy. But this is subsistence living. Life ceases to be good very quickly if someone gets sick or if food runs out. There is no social safety net. If disease strikes, particularly if it leads to permanent disability like leprosy can, whole families can be thrown into a spiral of poverty. Leprosy is a complex disease, both medically and with regard to its social implications. Yet I'm humbled meeting leprosy mission workers here who find simple and effective ways to support people with leprosy and enable lives to be transformed. They work with tender loving care, sometimes in difficult circumstances. And they are also able to turn a little into a lot. They take the support we provide and they are able to multiply it. 